Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin PF, and on today's video, we've got the Whiskey of the Month for February 2021. Now, as always, I'll be going through each of the bottles I covered this month with a brief overview. I'll be dropping links in the description below for my full reviews of those whiskies. So if you are interested in hearing a little bit more about them, you can go and check that out. And of course, if you're just here to find out which one was my Whiskey of the Month, I'll have chapters below so you can skip ahead to find out which one's the best one after I've covered these ones here. But you know, if you're here for the ride, and I hope you are, then let's go through each one in turn in the order I covered them, and then we'll pick my favorite at the end. The first one then this month was the brand new Stateside from, State Side from Heroes and Heretics. Uh, this one here is a George Dickel 10 year old. Um, pretty good, I mean, this is kind of standard fare over in the States, but coming from a UK perspective, it's great to see a single barrel Stateside George Dickel coming out again. Um, this one here is, you know, limited release, something like 233 bottles. So, yeah, fairly expensive this one was. So it's going to be roughly about that 90 sort of pounds mark, unless you can find it on a deal somewhere. Um, but as I said before, exclusivity is a good thing. Uh, the next one we had then, going completely the other side of the spectrum, is the Deanston Kentucky Cast Matured. This one will confuse a lot of people, confused me. Uh, I got this really cheap, it was like £18 on Amazon, and I know loads of people got this for like £12.50 or £12 or something like that, an absolute steal. Um, though I have to say, uh, my review of it, although it's, it's fine for that kind of like £18 mark and highly recommended for that, um, most of us in the whiskey community don't really understand why this exists, because they already had, Deanston I mean, already had a entry level in the virgin oak although that one is a little bit too expensive for my liking near enough 30 quid so yeah the gap between this and the next one up is huge unnecessarily huge i think third then we had the uh, special release from samuel gullivers and co uh, you know that i've been covering a lot of these uh, when they release them but this is the official england rugby whiskey and it's um whiskey uh, distilled and i guess matured at the uh, english distillery sir george's distillery uh, English whiskey, that sort of thing, um, aged for six years and then finished in rum casks. So an interesting dram for sure. Um, I think, uh, again, I, you know, I said this is a bit of a theme this month. I said it was probably just a few quid overpriced for my liking, but what you're paying for is kind of that, you know, the, the official England like whiskey, rugby whiskey kind of vibes, right? So, you know, this is it's definitely one for maybe for collectors, but I, I would advise drinking it because it's just one of those things. Moving on then to the last one. Um, this is the Apogee. Uh, kind of from the Bimba Distillery there, the masterminds behind this, but this is really a blended scotch that's been finished in Bimba casks. Um, there's a lot of information about this that isn't on the label, so if you are interested in this one and want to know more about it, please do go and check out my review of that one because um, it's it's worth listening to if you're interested in buying this. And again, um, something that I considered probably slightly overpriced. Actually, my cork, can you see my cork's been rising a little bit there? Let's put that back. Um, I'll have to finish that one off. But yeah, there you go. That's my four this uh, this month. So without further ado, I'll go into my app, my personal favourite one. Uh, and the reason why I picked it, which is important because it's a bit of a weird one this month. I went for the stateside. This one here. Mm. And to be honest with you, um, very rarely do I do this, but I've picked this one purely based on my own personal palate, flavour, preferences. There you go. Uh, so comparing it to the other ones... Um, I mean, for me, the Deanston was was never going to be a shoe in for this. You know, yes, it's good value if you can get it for the price it was, but it's really just destined for guard whiskey. Um, I wouldn't want to kind of even give this to people if they were looking to get into whiskey because there are far better options out there to convince somebody who doesn't like whiskey to enjoy whiskey. You know, it's a cheap one, so you know, great. It's great for drinking. There's nothing wrong with that. Not not bashing it at all in any way, shape, or form. But it wasn't going to win whiskey of the month. Um, similarly, I think. The uh, the other two, although they're both really good whiskies in their own right, and um, move this other way slightly, they're both really good whiskies in their own right. Very interesting whiskies, the both of them. Both of these probably slightly overpriced for what they are. Um, so I kind of discount them because of that, uh, as well as as my personal preferences on flavour profile. Back to the bourbon then, and this one here, although they don't call it a bourbon on here for some reason, I think it might have been aged in a in a something that already had bourbon in it once before. Therefore circumnavigating the rules. I'm not sure about that. I don't know. It just says on here, cast type bourbon barrel rather than new oak, which is a bit of a weird thing to put on a label, I think. Um, but yeah, so this one here is expensive and I will fully admit that. It's 90 quid and you can get something like this very, very, very easily in the States for an absolute snippet. So if you're watching this in the States, 
you can pretty much ignore this advice because you know you'll be able to get this far cheaper than I will. Again, the exclusivity thing comes into it, and this is for the price you're paying for it. An excellent, excellent drop. It's an absolute bang for your buck. Um, fifty percent, and you won't be disappointed. I don't think if you're a big bourbon fan, I don't think you'd be disappointed in this. Um, maybe just a one-off purchase though. But the stateside brand is worth keeping an eye on. They're getting some very interesting casks. But there you go. Uh, that's my whiskey of the month this month. Um, do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd like to know in the comments below. Out of these, which one would you pick? If you manage to try all four, unlikely, I'll probably say because especially these two really kind of random ones. But um, yeah, let me know what you think of these videos as well. We always like to know if you're enjoying the Whiskey of the Month stuff. And I'll see you again on more No Nonsense reviews and videos coming soon.